Can embarking on a spiritual path, even if it means traveling around the world to different spiritual sites, really truly awaken us to feel happier and more fulfilled in life? Stay tuned for this episode of Spearlift. Before we get started, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll be informed every time we release a new video related to topics around spirituality, well-being, personal development, and nutrition in the name of few. In this episode of Spearlift, I have the pleasure to speak with Christina. Christina is an author, blogger, and slow traveler who is currently on an epic travel adventure to the spiritual sites all around the world. She writes about spirituality, meditation, and teaches people how to meditate using personalized guided meditations that are tailored to them. She has published several books, such as How to Meditate and How to Eat Plant-Based. I certainly do, don't do that, but I hope to maybe someday. <laughs> Christina, it's a pleasure to have you on this episode of Spearlift. Welcome. Thank you. It's such an honor to be here. I'm really excited. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Christina. And it's quite amazing, as I often say in many episodes of Spearlift, that it, I have the pleasure to speak with so many different people around the world. And right now, I'm in Mexico City. You're in Bali. On the whole other side of the world, it's you're a day ahead, and it's incredible we can have this conversation. So it's truly an honor for me. And in this episode of Spearlifts, we're going to be speaking about your amazing journey, Christina, your amazing background. And I think it's quite unique. And I think especially going into this year, which is, this is being recorded in 2021, a lot of people are really looking to feel more uplifted, more hopeful, more optimistic, more positive on life. So, and I think your story and the way that you generally help people can really help many people around the world feel with a bigger, brighter, amazing outlook on their life. So before we get started or as we get started now can you please tell our listeners and viewers a little bit more about you about your journey that you're taking and why you decided to do it and the work you do to help people thank you yes what a wonderful introduction i'm honored um i would love to share my story with you and i would suggest that to start off with we just take 30 seconds to set our motivation. I feel that uh, setting a conscious motivation really makes a huge difference to how you perceive what you then enter into. So I would like to invite myself and you and anyone watching and listening to just take a deep breath and sigh it out. Sighing is really good for letting go of tension. And then take another deep breath in and close your eyes and just direct your attention to the question, what is the best possible outcome for me from watching, listening? What do I want to feel? What do I want to realize? What do I want to get out? of this conversation and of being here. I just give you 10 seconds to get clear on the best possible outcome for you. Okay, take another deep breath in, open your eyes. I'm just going to share that the best possible outcome for me is really to benefit people and um, I'm hoping to give people insights that really 
make a positive difference to their lives. That would be the best possible outcome of this conversation for me. So um, to, you asked about my story and uh, I think my story is all about this longing that we all have for a purpose and that niggling question that is always in the back of our minds, is this it or is there more to life? I think even uh, if we're lucky enough to have a job, we think, is this nine to five life all there is? Even if we have a family, even if we're quite happy, at the back of the, our minds, there's always this thought, um, isn't there more to life? Why am I here? What's the purpose? What is the purpose of my life? And I was always driven by this kind of longing um, from when I was a child. I call this looking for the spiritual side, activating the spiritual side in our lives. I think we all have a spiritual life. This is part of being human. And uh, I was looking for my spirituality since I was very small. My parents actually were atheists and they're very much anti-religion and I was the only child who was exempt from religious studies at school uh, but when I was a teenager I in my in my quest I wanted to join the um, Christian church in my surroundings at the time the Catholic Church was the most dominant and I wanted to become Catholic and be baptized and just join the church but I had this inherent belief in past lives I was already meditating then so the church said and that's wrong you cannot be baptized and officially join the church uh, with that kind of wrong belief so um, I knew that was uh, one of my truths inherent truths. so um, I kept searching and uh, years later I found Buddhism I became very interested in Buddhism and really for 10, 12 years, maybe longer, Buddhism became my life and I went to so many uh, teachings by the Dalai Lama, by great uh, masters and various Buddhist traditions and I practiced the Buddhist way of meditation which is quite a wide range um, from mindfulness to, to visualizations and um, definitely made me a better person, made me a kinder person and uh, someone who puts others first, is less selfish, also a person who knows herself better and um, understands better how life works. So I'm very grateful for that time, but nevertheless at some point I was called not to follow any religion anymore. I think religion is um, a sort of prefabricated, premeditated path where people tell you the goal, whether it's become enlightened or go to heaven or whatever it might be, and also tell you the path how to get there. And uh, it's still, you still have to walk that path, that's still hard enough. But there will always be, in my experience, in any religion, there will always be parts that don't sit well with you, that you don't agree with, um, that you don't want to follow. And um, that can be, you have to carefully check, that can be your ego, but that can also be genuine, that it doesn't, it's not right, it's not your truth. And um, any religion, in my experience, um, takes the attitude of, if you don't agree, then you are wrong and you have to find it, uh, you have to find our truth in your heart. So I didn't want to do that anymore and I embarked on my own um, spiritual journey on forging my, <coughs> forging my own path, which is um, scary and um, difficult. And you're not always asked, if you think that um, everything will be easy because you're just following your own truth, that's not true. What I was asked, what my calling was when I started out on my own spiritual path was to leave my old life behind, to leave my job, to leave my apartment that I'd been in for 17 years, to uh, leave my home and embark on this uh, year-long pilgrimage around the world. 
And it, that was, it sounds, and it was, not just sounds, it was wonderful, but it was the, the thought coming up to leave everything I know behind was scary. And uh, I didn't take it lightly. It took a year for me to acknowledge that um, this was what I was being called to do. And, and then when I was that? that how, was how long ago in, was it? Yeah, that was in um, 2018. And then I embarked on my journey in 2019. So it took another, um, took another year or half year for me to actually practically prepare and um, give my job to one of my colleagues and prepare my apartment for doing home exchanges. That's mainly how I traveled. That's a really um, affordable way of traveling around the world to swap homes right. uh, with other people. Mm -hmm. So yes, and then I went on this um, incredible journey uh, to the spiritual sites on the world. And like, like which ones? Yes. Um, I started off in Israel. So actually my pilgrimage started off um, to be a Christian pilgrimage. So I, in some sense, I came full circle. And it was incredibly um, moving to step into the footsteps of Jesus and touch the, uh, the waters of the Sea of Galilee where Jesus walked on water and performed all his miracles. And then I went on to uh, Southeast Asia and I did a lot of yoga and meditation retreats. And then I also went to Japan. I did a walking pilgrimage following one of their um, important spiritual and religious leaders, um, Kobo Daishi. I went to the island of Shikoku, where there are 80 temples that people traditionally uh, walk. It takes months to do that pilgrimage, to do all the 80 uh, temples. I didn't do all of them, but I did some of them. And uh, you do that all on foot. And I went to Australia and New Zealand. I went to Borneo. I had incredible encounters with nature. In Borneo, I saw some orangutans, and they are so close to uh, being human, really. When they look you straight in the eye, this is really something. They really see you, and it's something you will not forget. So I had some incredible experiences throughout that year. Incredible. Wow, Christina. Well, it sounds like an amazing journey so far that you've taken and going to very unique places around the world. Uh, and now it's led you in Bali and, you know, during a pandemic, you couldn't think of a better place you could probably be, to be honest. So <laughs> you're kind of fortunate in that sense to be in a type of paradise, to be honest, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. On yes. this whole journey so far, how how different do you think you have become, or not become? How how much have you realized about yourself that you didn't know before, and how has it shaped you right now? Yes, I think for me this journey was primarily really to. Um, align my inner and my outer because um, before I left for my journey I was still in the spiritual closet if you like I was not out um, I was working as a language teacher in a nine-to-five uh, job and uh, I was in adult education so I was working with adults all the time but I never talked about my spirituality um, it was like a secret that I kept from my normal life. And um, I think the, the call to give all that up was really to make my spirituality, which was the most, which is the most important thing in my life, make that center stage and um, dedicate the most time and energy to that, which is the closest to my heart and the most important thing in my life. And that was a huge difference, really coming out of the spiritual closet. And that's what I'm doing now. And Bali is definitely helping. Bali is the most spiritual country that I have encountered in all my travels. 
and it's very supportive to be in this energy. And another thing that um, really changed me was the realization that life truly is a co-creation. There's a huge part of our life that we are responsible for and we can create. Our part is to become really clear on what it is that we long for, what it is that we desire, what our highest wishes, our heart wishes in the heart of hearts, what kind of life we want to lead, what we want to have, what we want to do, who we want to be, and then explicitly tell the universe what that is. And then equally important for me was the realization to uh, let go of the how, not follow up these thoughts of this is this would be my my ideal my best life but I cannot uh, manifest that I cannot realize that because I don't know how I don't have the means this is not our part our part is to get clarity on our purpose and what we want and then outsource the how to the universe the universe is the most creative force in the universe it creates everything every single second and it loves to come up with really unsuspected creative solutions for anything that we task it with so don't how your way through life let the universe come up with a how I and, staying on that Christina I'm sorry to interrupt yes. you but I think no, yes. I think what you're saying is important and I would, what I would like if you could help our viewers and listeners to do, and I'll explain it right now, because what you're, what you're talking about, originally I heard uh, that from The Secret when it first came out in the 2000s, yeah. and then I've heard uh, Joe Dispenza, Greg Braden, uh, some of these other kind of... Um, I don't know how to define them, but it, I mean, I think people know who they are. They, t they, yeah. it's interesting because Greg Braden, I think he lives in New Mexico now, but he talks about in his videos a lot about exactly what you're talking about. And he relates it, especially to the gospel of Thomas, which is actually not included in the Bible. Um, yeah. I don't know why, but it's not because it has a lot of very, interesting things about you what you're talking about and your intuition and your light inside and i don't know why it's down the bio, but it's there you can find it you know yes so what i think yes. you're yes. talking about yeah what, what what you're talking about is fundamentally important because because not only for what it means in creating the life we want but especially, I think it's one of the most important things that people c should adhere to going into this next year to really turn these sentiments of, of isolation, depression, anxiety, et cetera, through a pandemic into a whole different thing that's positive. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, would you kind of walk through or demonstrate or or, or 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 show in a, a very practical way how to do what you're saying because I think people um, don't know how to do that and they might be doing it wrong or they may not understand how to do it. So can you do? Let's just do like a hypothetical, um, you know, demonstration right now, if you don't mind, to yeah. explain to people how to do that. And so maybe when they wake up in the morning or start their day or before they go to bed or whenever they do that and they remember that practice. Yes. So would you mind a walk yes. through a, that example? Yeah, I'd love to. It's really very simple. It doesn't require you to even think of yourself as a spiritual person or there's no mysticism involved. It's not um, esoteric. There are three very simple steps. The first step is to get really clear on what you want. Give yourself permission to think of your highest good. 
to think of your very best life. Don't put any limitations on yourself by thinking um, I'm not allowed, that doesn't feel, um, it feels greedy or maybe I'm taking if I have so much good stuff happening in my life, maybe I'm taking some of the good stuff away from uh, other people. They're in the universe. The universe is, has infinite goodness and the universe really wants to give you all that goodness. So there are planets in the universe entirely made of diamonds. <laughs> so you could never ask for too much, literally. Just think of what it is that would uh, benefit you the most what is your highest wish so so yeah. sorry i'm i'm a little bit meticulous cuz i'm my brain is too like I try to organize everything too much it's crazy yeah. but no. like so that first step what you're talking about and so our viewers and listeners can understand is it the first thing you do is like Im like imagine it in your mind and just and imagine it it's already real and just breathe into that or like what's the practical methods of that like imagine it in your mind and like it's already happened uh -huh. finding it first maybe you've had a um probably not you but maybe some of the viewers here you've experienced that in the very beginning setting your motivation what is it really that you want to get out of this talk it is quite difficult to be really clear so to just find your um, greatest wish, what it is that you want to have, what it is that you want to do, what it is that you want to be. The first step is just to get clarity and whatever helps you, you don't have to uh, visualize this already happening. You have to get clear, really clear on what you want. This may help. It may help if you sit down and take some deep breath and close your eyes and really feel into it. It may help you to journal and write it down. You need to get to a point where you can say it out loud in a coherent, clear manner. That's and like it's that already happens. happened almost, right? Is that true? Put Yes, put the, uh, the way that you worded um, in the present tense. So I am this, I'm doing that, I have this. And don't use negative negative words like not or never or you know like I do not want to feel sick anymore. I do not want to have this pain anymore that I have uh, in my back. But uh, word it positively. Um, um, I am healed. Uh, I am receiving healing every day. I'm getting better every day. So it's like an I am, it's like almost like an I am affirmation. Is that right? Yes, exactly. Yes. And uh, for me, the most important step in this first part is the clarity and being able to voice it clearly with details. And then you ask the universe, this is the second step, out loud or if you feel somehow embarrassed, you can do it in your head, but as really clear thoughts. Definitely helps me to write it down and to say it out loud. So if you can uh, do that, this is the way that I would recommend. And the third step is then to let go, not worry about how am I going to make this happen, but outsourcing it to the universe. I want to give you a really um, a practical example per of what perfect. I did very recently. Perfect. So I am single. I've been single for a few years and I like it actually. Well, maybe one of our viewers can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm yeah. sure they're nice people. Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah, <laughs> I am <laughs> absolutely sure. So I um, realized that I am in a really good place within myself, but I wasn't really coming up, rubbing onto any other boundaries because there was no one else there in my space and I was just peacing out, blissing out and feeling very um, content and peaceful most of the time. So I realized to um, challenge myself and go further on the path, I really needed um, to bring someone else into my life, a partner that I want to be with and live with and do the work with. I don't have particularly romantic <laughs> connotations with being in a relationship. I think 
they are wonderful, but they are work. That's where you do the work. So I said to the universe, um, please give me someone to live with that um, I can practice uh, my commitment to others and my, um, my boundaries and putting others first and also bring some energy into my life because I'm just uh, being very still and peaceful here. And the way I worded it, in my mind, I was thinking about a re romantic relationship, but what I literally said to the universe, bring me someone to live with. So what manifested in my life was a roommate, a female really? roommate. Yes. How, how, how soon after that? Oh, um, a week, two weeks. It was really quick. And I haven't lived with anyone uh, for decades. <laughs> so this was really a huge turnaround, but she uh, brought everything in into my life that I had asked for. Right. Not the romance, but I hadn't asked for that. But she brought, she was quite, um, I hope she's not watching this. <laughs> 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 she was a drama queen and she really uh, needed a lot of my time and commitment and focus and energy. But she also brought a lot of um, uh, a lot of whirlwind into my life, which I had asked for, and uh, really made me put her and her needs because everything was so urgent with her. Put her needs uh, before my own. So I manifested the exact thing that I had asked for. But that's why this clarity is so important, and that's why saying it exactly how you want it is so important and then let go and let the universe come up with really surprising ways well let me l let me just on that because i think it's really important again so again the first thing it seems to be two-step process the first thing is imagining the at least the idea of what you want and having clarity and maybe saying i am this or i have this etc right yeah. so is it i just want to make sure it, it doesn't contradict uh having the thought and f feeling that you have it and then asking the universe for it because that's what it seems it seems like a little bit to me how it was explained like you imagine it and it's already there but then you ask the universe to bring it in is that correct what i'm saying yes i think that you attract more of what you focus on yeah. so if you are desperate this was something that happened for me in manifesting money that i always thought um money doesn't like me and uh, money doesn't come to me because money and uh, spirituality don't go well together and spiritual people are not rich and therefore I was um, whenever I was asking for money I was in a very desperate place but I didn't um, feel um, that I could have or deserved or should have that money so the feeling that you are already in that vibration definitely tells the universe uh, what you are aligned with and then lets that that energy easily flow to you. And but I think the oh, yeah. mm -hmm. clarity the clarity of what you want is the most is the most important. You can if you feel confused about being or having something and then asking then i would say get the clarity and um, ask the universe that this may come into your life and uh, you are perfectly allowed to feel that this is not yet the case in your life that is absolutely fine and how, how uh, i hear uh people ask this question sometimes when you do that how how often do you ask and just let go because some people may put the intention out there and wait for it to come and manifest itself. But do you ask every day, every hour, every week? Like how often do you, you know, let that thing come to, to reality? Well, our reality, 3d reality. Yeah. And 
how, like how often do you set that intention like how often yes that's a it's a good question it's definitely not enough to ask for it once you have to keep asking and i would not like to prescribe a set number but you have to feel into whenever the mind really drifts completely away from that reality and gets stuck in what you, where you are currently at, where you can't see, where you can't feel um, yourself being in alignment with what you want, then you bring back, back. that okay. kind of clarity and ask again. So like when you feel it's something's drifting away or you feel yes. doubt or you feel insecure yes. about something, yes. about the, the goal you want, bring yes. it back in, reaffirm it, set the intention, set the clarity and let it go again, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly right. So Christina, you really have changed your life. And l let me ask you, what what were you doing? Like what what were you doing before you set out on this global journey? And what are you doing now? And how how is the work you're doing now important for you? And how has it really changed you? Like, let's just give our viewers and our listeners a little bit about like, what was your actual work before? And what are you doing now that, you know, is completely different? So in practical terms, I um, have always been running my own business, which is a language school in London. I've lived in London for almost 30 years for most of my life. So I used to teach. It all used to be pre-corona. It all used to be face to face. And I used to do um, corporate training, which means that um, myself and the teachers who work with me, we used to go into companies and teach people where they work, usually one to one or in very small groups. And now what happened for me was that I have given all my former students to one of the colleagues who works with me. And of course, now we don't do face to face classes at all for the moment because of Corona. So everything actually happens online. I still run that company and I manage um, my, my teachers and my clients and I can do that from anywhere. And I was doing that work throughout my journey. So um, I changed my job to be able to be a digital nomad. That's a thing. That's the that's yeah. the term for it when you can do your work from from anywhere. anywhere. So I changed my work to be able to do that. I do not have substantial savings. I uh, had to keep working um, throughout my travels. And as I said, I was mainly doing home exchanges, which are free. You let other people stay in your home and not get money for that, and uh, then stay in their home for free. Uh, so that's a very affordable way of doing that. Um, you can do that on points, so you don't have to um, swap with people directly. You can let anyone stay in your home, get points, and then use those points to stay in anyone else's home around the world. And now that uh, Corona has happened, I'm actually renting my apartment in London. So I'm making a little bit of money that way. But you also do uh, virtual sessions teaching people meditation and various other things, right? Yes. So I'm uh, teaching meditation by donation. So this is not my main income stream, but it is the, um, core of my heart business. I've been meditating for decades and I think that meditation can really help us to become more spiritual. Spirituality really for me has these two um, steps or two dimensions. One is to create a better relationship with yourself and the other is to create a better relationship with the divine. And there are so many different types of meditation and they can help us um, achieve both those goals. And I like to uh, dispel some of the myths around meditation that people often think um, they can't meditate. So I teach people with um, tailored guided meditations that work for their goals and their mindset. 
That's, that's amazing. And in a moment, we'll do actually a demonstration, if you don't mind, because I think it'll be extremely helpful for both the sure. viewers and the listeners. Yes. But before we get to that, I want to ask you, have you, and I think it may be obvious, yes, but I just want you to elaborate more on it. How, how do you think you've been more happy, more fulfilled in your life uh, being on the spiritual path you've been on? And what has it, what is the biggest lesson it has taught you, Christina, up until this point now? It's hmm. a nice question. Um, it's really brought my inner and my outer into alignment. That is the biggest um, change in my life. And that, and I have found my purpose and I'm living my purpose. And um, that is to walk the path towards awakening and teaching others along alongside this path and um, it's really <laughs> that is it really that is in a nutshell no that but that's beautiful because it doesn't have to be overly happier. complex it's like mm. that's the exact thing and that's what it means and that's where the fulfillment is i and i and i and i feel personally like when we speak to i don't know depending on how our conversations and relationships are with other people and around the world i i tend to find in general like just from my own uh purview of things that we we really overcomplicate life you know we take we take on too much we inundate ourselves with too many situations information and we just don't get the clarity we need and we, we just i hate to say this and maybe it's in a way over simplistic for me to say it but i think we make life harder than it should be you know um yes, sure. yeah i don't know <laughs> i could be wrong but but based on no. what you're saying and your experience and everything you've done it sounds like it just becomes very clear certain things and becomes everything no Yes, I think it's about giving yourself permission to uh, lead an incredible life. And um, when I, people often say to me, you, you, you live in paradise and you have an amazing life. And I, I fully agree. And I love my life. But Except I the drama queen you just told me about. <laughs> we, there was so much learning for, for both of us. So it was all good. And I, I asked for it and I manifested it. And interestingly enough, when um, that didn't that lasted for a few months, it didn't last that long. And then we decided to go on both sides, decided to go our separate ways. But then the universe put three, not one or two, three puppies into my life, which are doing the exact same thing. <laughs> They're really taking my focus off. That overcompensates. <laughs> They're really taking the focus off of my own life and what I want to do. They're like having babies and making me get up in the middle of the night and their needs are more important than mine. But they also en enliven my, my life and bring so much love into my life. Exactly. Again, romance is missing. But uh, yeah, other than that, they are exactly what I asked for. So uh, I lost my thread now, what I was talking about. No, yeah, but I, you know, in, in the end, in the end, there is that some, um, it reminds me of that Rolling Stone song, uh, you can't always get what you want, but you get what you need or something like that. I don't know. I, I could be screwing that up. <laughs> you know, so I think it's like that with the universe song, sometimes. But... <laughs> it, it, you know, tell, you put it out there and then you get something, but it might not be what you expect right away, but it might be teaching you another thing. So who, who knows? I have a great um, story I want to tell you and everyone listening. Um, why manifesting sometimes doesn't work. <clears throat> yeah, so that's very important. Also... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let me just uh, have some water. I haven't been up <clears throat> that long. <clears throat> well, and our viewers and listeners have to realize it's <laughs> where I am, and she just woke up on the other side of the world. Where <laughs> so please take that into consideration. <laughs> Thank you so much. So what happened was I took these three puppies into my house that I was renting, and then I was evicted because I took three puppies into my house. 
and that was not okay and I was really um, angry at first and uh, because I was doing a good thing and um, I was also quite fearful because I was given a week uh, to find somewhere else to live in high season in Bali and I couldn't I could not find anywhere else that would take me with three dogs and I got quite uh, desperate and angry with the universe why are you doing this to me you're not helping and uh, I'm doing a good thing I deserve some support and it was like banging my my head against a brick wall but insisting that there is a door there and I want to go go through that door and there wasn't a door and that is usually when that happens that's a sign that the universe is directing you to a slightly different area of the room where there is a door and where it would be best for you to go through right. and this is exactly what happened so as soon as I uh, let go and even let go of the one thing that was non-negotiable for me which was staying with my puppies <clears throat> as soon as I let go this incredible guy came into my life who was um, who <clears throat> this incredible guy came into my life who's running a dog hotel I didn't even know that's a thing but it is and he loves dogs I've never seen anyone with more love for dogs but also had the experience of training them because what was happening was that these puppies they were wild and running all over the place and fighting and I was not in control of those puppies so what happened was that he took them into his dog hotel they were loved really well cared for and they were being trained in a way that I was not able to and he was also teaching me how to train them and so the best possible thing happened to the puppies and the best possible thing happened to me in that I was able to uh, move to the town where I am now which I had visited before that has a really special energy um, a very um, it's like this town is like um, it's uh, it's on the it's on the ocean and the first time I came so lucky here, I know the first time I, I came here I felt there is such a profound stillness here it is like living in the pause after an exhale before the next inhale this is the state that the nature that this place is in and when I visited I was thinking I would love to live here this would be so good for my practice but I can't because I have puppies I can't possibly move so then when the puppies were taken into really good care I was able to move here and I've been here three weeks and it's been incredible for my wow. practice so by letting go really the best possible thing happened for both me and and my dogs and, and, and yeah and that's a very important thing you're saying, Christina. And I think we have to take that into consideration when we are asking the universe for something and to guide us towards that, whatever it is, with clarity. Because maybe in our own way of doing that, we have our own idea or mind made up what that outcome is going to be but maybe it's not going to be the exact way we imagine it right we have to i think i think our expectations have to be more flexible right yes yes exactly the outcome is nearly never exactly what you envisioned because the the universe comes up with these really surprising creative ways of giving you exactly what you need Oh, that's and, amazing. Uh, yes. mm -hmm. Life is a co-creation. So we have to take responsibly, responsibility for our part. But that doesn't mean that um, we can uh, create 100% of our life. Sometimes yeah. the universe will step in and give us not what we ask for, but something better. Yeah, that's, very, that's a very important thing I think people need to pay attention to and keep in mind because... I, th I really, I truly believe that, ha and I'm guilty of it for sure, but having 
over expectations of of several issues and facets of your life can lead to a lot of anxiety, depression, and just pure disappointment. And so we got to be more loose and we got to be more, uh, less rigid with like, you know, boom, 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 boom. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm speaking to the choir cause I'm <laughs> kind of like that. So I need to, <laughs> I really need to prove to be honest, but, um, we're seeing it. Can help oh, sorry. Go that. ahead. Yeah. Can yeah. you speak about that, uh, right now uh, about gratitude, about you know how that plays a very important role in our you know day-to-day oh, yeah. -day situations yes gratitude is really for me it's become a way of life that i constantly notice all the good things in my life if that's not a um, natural practice for you then make a point of sitting down every day at least five minutes and write down uh, what you're grateful for being grateful lets the universe know what is working for you, yeah. what you like, what you'd like to have more of. You can actually explicitly tell the universe, this is what I want, I love this, I'm open to more of this. Another really good way of practicing gratitude, I've done this several times myself, is to have a gratitude buddy, yeah. an accountability buddy, and every idea. morning, every evening, you WhatsApp each other and send each other a list of what you're grateful for. And it's happened to me um, that I did it every evening and some evenings I thought I've just been working all day, I've been, at the, uh, been on my laptop all day, I have nothing to be grateful for. But I have to send her something, so let me sit down, let me think of it. And then once you start, a huge list of um, things to be grateful for just flooded my head and I even had to stop myself after 15 or 20 minutes. The list got really long and making that list every day really transformed my seeing of all the good things I have in my life and then it's become a way of living that I constantly send up this prayer of I love my life, I love this beauty, I love going on this walk, I love all these opportunities that I have, whatever it is that you are grateful for. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's amazing. And I do that daily as well as a practice. Yeah. And I mean, it's endless, the things to be grateful yeah. for. Like once you yeah. start getting a few of these in uh, going, it's like you're grateful for 10 million other things and it just yeah. it never stops. And it actually just, yeah. you feel this kind of expansion and this love inside of you just uh, grow and permeate. And it's a very powerful thing to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Christina, as just to end our, this amazing conversation, this episode, uh, you know, that has just been fantastic. And, you know, I think very rewarding for the viewers and listeners on Spearlift, we call them Spearlifters, to be a part of this um, amazing discussion with you. Like, can you, can we do uh, that demonstration of uh, the meditation? So maybe yes. the listeners yes, and viewers can go short. on their own and do it. Yeah, yes. So for me, meditation, I want to say a couple of things about meditation. Often people think it's about sitting cross-legged on the floor. That's what meditation is and becoming very quiet and relaxing and emptying the mind of thoughts. And none of this is true. You can uh, sit on a chair, um, you can do meditation while walking, while lying down and you will have thoughts. Uh, many people think they can't meditate because they can't empty their mind. You can't empty your mind. It's very difficult, very, very advanced uh, point where you may be having no thoughts. You will have thoughts and that's okay. Um, but for me, meditation is about going inside, involuting and entering your inner world and entering a state of joy and elevation and uplifting. Um, so as so long as I you're feeling that before you, no matter what your mind's doing, as long as you're feeling that going into the meditation, that's positive, right? And as long as you're generating that and, and coming back to that every time a thought comes up and distracts you, that's okay. How, you know, if you have a thought coming up 
10 times in your meditation, you bring your mind back 11 times. And if you have a thought come up a thousand times, it doesn't matter. You bring your mind back a thousand and one times and you just notice and accept. That's a great point. I still have thoughts as well. So you will have thoughts and that's okay. Okay, I've uh, written down a, um, a guided meditation, so I'm just going to look at that. Sure. I need my reading glasses for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me find it. Okay, here we go. So be comfortable, everyone. Uh, the only prerequisite or uh, what will really benefit you is if you sit up with a straight back. Take a deep breath in and sigh it out. Ah, ah. Consciously let go of any tension. Physically release tension in your shoulders, in your jaw. Mentally release the day. Let go of the outer world for the moment. We'll still be here when we come back, don't worry. Adjust your posture again to a straight back. Check where your energy is at. Are you leaning forward? Are you leaning backwards? Bring yourself back to center. With your back straight, take another deep breath in. Sigh it out. Ah, relax. Deep breathing is the quickest way home. Close your eyes. Sit up with your back straight and imagine a beautiful, bright, warm light at the center of your heart space. The center of your heart space is in the middle of your chest. This beautiful, warm, bright light represents your soul, the ancient part of you that knows. Invite that part of you to connect with all of you. Let your soul light flow through your entire body, warming each part of you. Let it flood your mind. Take over all your thoughts. Let the soul light become your world for a moment it feels good it feels like home it feels like a warm hug that envelops you cocoons you Let that warm, bright light of your soul shine out and connect you to the wisdom and the love of the universe where everything makes sense. Everything happens at the right time. Just bask in this warm, beautiful light and in this knowing. You're flooded with this light and this knowing. It is warming your heart. It is lifting your spirit. You can direct it to any part of your body that needs healing. You can direct the light to any part of your mind that might be feeling worried or anxious. Any part of your mind that may feel sorrow or darkness. Ask 
your soul what it would like you to create in your life? What is your deepest desire? What is your heart's wish? What is it that you wish to have, you wish to do, you wish to be? Just pay attention to any words, any images that might spontaneously come up in your mind's eye. Let it crystallize, feel into it. What is your soul calling you to do? What kind of life is your soul calling you to create? What is your greatest heart's wish? Don't judge yourself, don't censor yourself. Anything is allowed. No wish is too small or too big. be the perfect relationship, it might be abundance, it might be awakening and enlightenment. Who do you yearn to become? Become very clear about your greatest wish. And now in your mind, tell the universe, Dear universe, this is what I wish for with all my heart. The light of your soul sends this wish up and out to the universe. The universe hears you and smiles at you. The universe has your back and you let go of the how knowing that the universe has heard you. Now it's slowly time to return. Thank the universe, thank the light of your soul and visualize this light retracting and collecting as a small bright drop that lives at the center of your heart. And know that you can come back here and connect with your soul and with your heart's desire anytime. And slowly move your fingers and your toes. Take a deep breath in. When you're ready, slowly open your eyes back to the room. Oh, that was incredible, Christine. I feel like a, a whole different being right now. So <laughs> very powerful, very powerful. And I think that's, you know, something that our viewers and our listeners can definitely take into account and do each and every day or any time that they feel they need to connect in that way. And it's a very, very moving, very powerful uh, meditation. So I thank you so, so very much 
for demonstrating that for for them. And Christina, where can our viewers and listeners find out more about you? Link up and and find all your information. Uh, you know, maybe that lucky man somewhere in the world, or you know, you know the romance, whatever you're looking yeah. for, comes to you. You know, they can find my life. You're yeah. welcome. Yes. So where where are all the uh, the the main points of uh, contact people can find you? I think the best way to connect with me is on my website. I'm on spiritandtravel.com. Spiritandtravel.com. I have many articles about manifesting, about spirituality. You can sign up to my newsletter. You can book a one-to-one session via my website. It's all there. And my Instagram links and my Facebook links are also on my website. And I'd love to um, complete our chat by dedicating any positive energy we may have generated to the benefit of all beings. May we all fully awaken and may I guide you to complete and full enlightenment. That is my dedication. That is beautiful, Christina. And that's a very, very beautiful and powerful message to end this excellent conversation with you on and we're going to make sure viewers and listeners we're going to include all christine's information in the description notes of this episode thank you very much again christina and we'll see you all on the next episode thank you for having me it's been such a pleasure thank you so much thank you christina